everyone and welcome to Mass Memorial CME Church in Lansing where our pastor is the Reverend Adrian Swanigan and our First Lady is Sister Janine Swanigan. It's good to have you with us on this fifth Sunday of the month of October. Today is Missionary Emphasis Sunday and we are delighted that you chose to be a part of our service today. We do have a special treat coming today with this being Missionary Emphasis Sunday with a special guest speaker that's dear to us. And uh, we look forward to hearing a great message today on the perfecting of our faith from, doctor, from Reverend Dr. Alondra Washington. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. As we quiet our minds and in our hearts and prepare for this worship service, the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth be silent before him. So with that, let's go to service. Let us unite in this historic confession of the Christian faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we humbly come before your holy presence, calm our spirits, Heavenly Father, Remove all distractions. Break down walls, Heavenly Father. Soften our hearts and lead us, Heavenly Father, in joy and celebration of you. Knowing that you love us and you accept us as we are. May we realize the power, Heavenly Father, of your love today as we pray in spirit and in truth. We invite your Holy Spirit to enter our hearts and minds. May we all be set free on today, Lord, from all that binds us, for all that keeps us in bondage, for all that keeps us in sin. May we all be set free and healed of our brokenness, Heavenly Father, and conform to your image, Heavenly Father. We are not here physically together, Heavenly Father, but we are here today, united by our hearts and by your Holy Spirit. Bless the service as we come together to worship you, Father. We adore you. We magnify your name. We thank you for the day that you have given us on this day and every day. May your grace and mercy fall upon this service today, Heavenly Father, and upon the messenger and the message that you have ordained and blessed in the messenger's heart. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen and amen. Good morning, church. This morning I'll be reading Hebrews chapter 11, verse 40. 
in Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 to 2. God having provided something better for us, that they should not be made perfect apart from us. Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. From the word of God to the people of God, thanks be to God. Good morning again. We want to thank everyone for being a part of our Missionary Emphasis Sunday. We thank, you, we thank the Lord uh, for his presence. Just a few announcements uh, on this Sunday. Next Sunday, which will be November the 7th, First Sunday, we will open up our building once again. We're going to have in-house services once again. And I don't know about you, but I am glad to be in the service one more time. Aren't you excited? Let's give God some praise. Next Sunday will be our first Sunday back in our new building. We thank the Lord who has brought us through this pandemic uh, and who will keep us. And our prayers is that he will continue to keep us. Just a few uh, instructions for the congregation. Please wear your mask. Let us stay six feet apart. Our service will be one hour. The church has been clean. It has been sanitized. And there are sanitize, hand sanitizer that is stationed in various areas of the church. Um, and if you need additional masks, they are, will be available. Also, it is first Sunday. So as you enter into the front door, please retrieve your elements on, from the desk for the service. We will not come to the altar. We will stand and we will uh, receive communion standing. The only altar call during this service will be for those who want to accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Amen. So again, we are excited. We are praising God uh, for being back in our building once again. Amen. Also, um, I want to thank our uh, Mass Memorial uh, Missionary Society here. Uh, on our successful prayer breakfast on yesterday at 9 o'clock. Uh, the theme was Give Us This Day Our Daily Bread. Let me thank our missionaries under the leadership of Sister Deborah Plummer, who is the president, and all of the participants of this wonderful event. We thank God for his presence. We thank God for the anointing upon this service, and we praise God for all that he is doing. Again, I want to thank our wonderful missionaries. Also a card, thank you so much. Dear Mask family, thank you so much for this generous card and gift. Patrice and I are fortunate to have so many wonderful people in our corner. We love you all. Asking God to bless you in return for the thoughtfulness that you've shown. Thank you. And this is from our wonderful members, Deontay and Patrice. Amen. Let us now continue with our service. Amen. Good morning, everyone. It is indeed our pleasure to introduce our preacher for this Sunday morning's Missionary Emphasis Service. Our preacher grew up in East St. Louis, Missouri. After graduating high school, uh, she matriculated to the Southern to Southern Illinois University in Edwardsville, Illinois. She earned a bachelor's in business administration and a master's in public policy administration. She currently holds a doctorate from Western Mich Michigan University. She is presently employed as an executive with the Kellogg Foundation in Battle Creek, Michigan. 
Prior to her employment with the Kellogg Foundation, she served her community in various organizations in, in East St. Louis. She is currently the founder of Cultures for Good and Black Pearl Wisdom Organizations. She is married to the Reverend Dr. Philip D. Washington, presiding elder of the Detroit and Mid-Michigan districts, where she serves as our first lady. They have two daughters, Tina and Taria, two son-in-laws, Henry Daniels and Reverend Zachary Mullins, and our proud gushing grandparents of five, Talia, Tia, Tobias, Tabitha, and Matthew. In December 2014, our preacher answered her call to ministry. She was ordained local deacon from the Michigan Indiana region of the Christian Methodist Episcopal Church. She is an anointed woman of God and an electrifying preacher. The next voice you'll hear after the next election will be that of the Reverend Dr. Alandra Washington. Dr. Alandra Washington, preach, preach the word. Preach the word. Praise God from whom all blessings flow and greetings Mask Memorial CME Church. I praise and thank God for this opportunity to bring a word to the Mass family on this Missionary Sunday. Let me first thank and praise God for the spirit-filled pastor of this house of faith, Reverend Adrian Swanigan and his sweet and lovely wife, Sister Janine Swanigan. We praise and thank God for your faithful service and your love for God and his church. I would also like to thank your missionary president, Sister Deborah Plummer, for this invitation and for her steadfast and amazing leadership she provides to the Mask Memorial CME Church Missionary Society. I also bring greetings from the Dozier Memorial CME Church, where Reverend Dr. Philip D. Washington is my pastor. If you would please turn your Bibles with me to Hebrews chapter 12 starting at verse number one. And the word of the Lord reads as thus. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. And let us run this pers with perseverance, the race marked out for us fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. I will be preaching from your missionary theme this morning, perfecting faith. Shall we pray? Spirit of the living God, Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on us today. Spirit of the living God, send your anointing our way. 
Father God, we come to you this morning just thanking you for this opportunity to share a word. Lord, we thank you for this Missionary Sunday and all of the missionaries who toil in your vineyard in service to you. Lord, we just ask you this day that you would remove me and fill me with your spirit so that I may be able to bring a word from you. Now, Lord, we just thank you for all that you've done and all that you will do in this service today. We praise you, we magnify you, and we glorify you. In the living name of Jesus the Christ, we pray. Amen. Church, like never before, in this day and age, our faith in God is being challenged at every turn. We are in a crisis and many of us are becoming disconnected from God, from Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. The crisis grows even more evident every day as we turn on the news or go out to our favorite uh, social media channels and witness the violence and attack and hate against people of color, against God's people, against the, the degradation of immigrants, especially immigrants of color. We've witnessed brutality and misogyny, self sex trafficking and of children, women and girls, attacks being lodged against people who are fighting for freedom, for the rights that should be afforded to every human being. Yes, we are witnessing apostasy in these contemporary days, the falling away of those who say they love the Lord, turning aside from God to follow false doctrine and idol gods. Yes, in this day, we are seeing our faith being challenged. Satan is trying to find a way to break our relationship with God, to steal your joy, to zap your zeal, to make you think you are defeated, useless, <clears throat> helpless, especially during this time as we all navigate this deadly COVID-19 pandemic. The experience that many of us have had to go through, the loss and grief of dealing with someone who has passed because of this deadly virus, loved ones, family members, Dealing with isolation. We know we aren't able to fellowship with one another the way we used to fellowship. We, want, we aren't able to be in close proximity with one another, to give a holy hug and a holy kiss, to come together and to, to lock arms and lock hands and, and, and touch and agree with one another. We know that this pandemic has caused a shift in us. And some has, it has even caused a shift in their relationship with God. Some of us may be shackled with burdens, even as I speak, things that are vexing our spirit, causing us to carry the sin of anxiety and weary, restlessness, sleepless nights, a financial burden, relationship issues with a son, a daughter, or even a spouse. Others may have received a bad report from the doctor. You know the word of God says, cast your cares on me. But someone may be wondering, asking the question, can God really deliver me from this? Does God even care? Can and will God do it for me? Questioning if your situ situation is too hard for God, has God abandoned you? Will God come and see about me? Well, there's a word from God today that if you allow it, it will lift your spirit. If you allow it, it will encourage you. There is a word today for you that would help you to understand who you are and whose you are. That word is Jesus, a perfecter of your faith. We find in today's text in Hebrews chapter 12, verses one through two, that the first couple of verses opens with the word 
of encouragement and admonishment to trust Jesus. The writer sends a letter to this group of Jewish Christians who are dealing with some horrific atrocities because they believe in Jesus as the son of God. Jesus who was crucified for their sins. Jesus who was buried and rose on the third day claiming all power and victory and who now sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. Because they believed in this salvation doctrine of Jesus Christ, these Jewish Christians were undergoing severe persecution and imprisonment, death even. This real and imminent danger was having a major impact on this body of believers. It was causing some to walk away from Jesus, to give up on the church and to abandon their faith altogether. I don't know about you, but have you ever been in a situation where you just feel like giving up, throwing in the towel, asking yourself, what is the use? I've tried it God's way and my change still hasn't come. It's never seemed to be my season. I've prayed about it and I've cried about it. And I wonder if God even really hears me. It was both this feeling of fear and despair that this letter to the Hebrews was addressed. The letter was written to remind these Christian men, women, boys and girls, just who Jesus is and what he has already done for them. In the earlier part of the scripture, the writer tells them to lay aside the weight of sin and to run the race that is set before them, knowing with Christ on your side, the race is already won. But the letter doesn't stop there. It goes on to tell them that in order to run this race and to receive the victory, they must do it by looking to Jesus, who is the author and finisher of their faith. In other words, Jesus is the embodiment of faith. He is the original designer of faith. He is the source of faith, the one who generates and gives faith. The word author translated in the Greek means a pioneer, a source of, a founder of. Jesus is the pioneer, the one who has blazed the trail of faith by first running the race and showing us how to be steadfast in our faith so we too can claim the victory. So if we want to grow in our faith, to mature in our faith, we must first look to the one who designed the blueprint of godly faith. Christ established faith by submitting to the will of his father, trusting God to give him strength to fulfill his mission, carrying out the salvation plan. Not only did Jesus Christ mold what faith is, what it looks like in action, and how it shows up in our lives, but he also equipped us. He has given us the power to live a faith-filled life by taking hold to the promises so that we can run this Christian race and endure. Christ is the goal of our faith. Our faith is directed in the one who authored faith. I heard a preacher not too long ago say that faith will take possession of God's promises. In other words, there are promises that have been designed mapped out for our lives when we have faith in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. As believers in Christ, our faith isn't a hollow faith. It isn't an empty faith, faith or a temporal faith like the things of this world. But for those who have put their faith in Christ and his word, we are endowed with promises that he has designed for our lives, promises that are true, Promises that are real, promises that are authentic, promises that are eternal, that are e abundant. I am so glad to know I have a heavenly endowment of rich blessings and abund abundant promises that can only come from Christ Jesus. 
Turn to your neighbor on Zoom and tell them, I have an endowment. It is good that you have your 401k plans and your pension plans and your term life insurance that you've invested in stocks and bonds, but it's even better to have a heavenly endowment. You know, an endowment that lets us know grace is sufficient for us through any circumstance and situation. That in your father's house, you have many mansions. That you have life and life more abundantly. That our God supplies our every need according to his riches and glory. And that you have a thousand cattle on a hill. Oh yes, through faith, you have an endowment of rich blessings and promises from God. As a believer in Christ, he expects you to exercise your faith to possess those promises, those things that he has already destined for your life. Every promise, every covenant he made is tied up in the faith that you put in him. Jesus is the author and perfecter of our faith. So beloved, take ownership of the promises that Christ has designed for your life. Let it get deep down in your spirit. Speak his promises, rest in his promises, meditate on his promises, testify of his goodness and his promises. Don't you know the author and perfecter of your faith has already written your victory story? You have an expected outcome of victory. You have an expected Expected outcome of victory, that through faith in Christ Jesus, it has already been ordained. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you, not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Don't you know Christ has flipped the script in your life and through faith in him and his word, you have a new identity? In the industry I work in, we call it narrative change. Narrative change seeks to shift the interpretation of a dominant story about a person or thing and provides a different interpretation, a different kind of framing that gets closer to the authentic truth. For example, there's a dominant narrative that Christopher Columbus discovered America. A different narrative that gets us closer to the truth is the fact that Christopher Columbus did not actually discover this new land. It was already occupied by Native Americans. Vikings had actually been to this new land years before Columbus stepped foot on it. And Columbus did not discover this new land. He exploited it. He changed Native Americans' name to Indians. He enslaved many Native Americans and killed those who revolted. Don't you know the author and finisher of your faith has a narrative change that he has flipped for you? He has changed the dominant narrative in your life. Oh, let me talk about it this way. Before Christ came on the scene, the narrative was you were a slave to sin, sinking in sin to rise no more. Your dominant narrative was that you were doomed to hell. Your dominant narrative was your life was filled with hopelessness, despair, turmoil, guilt, and shame. But Jesus Christ, the author and finisher of faith, came on the scene and changed your narrative. Now you have a different story. You're the head and not the tail, the lender, not the borrower, the one who can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. You are wonderfully and beautifully made. You are Christ's workmanship. You are a new creature. You are an heir of salvation. Oh, your narrative has been flipped today. The author and finisher of your faith has flipped your narrative. He has shifted your narrative and you are now with him. Christ, the author and finisher of, of our faith, has given us exceedingly great and precious promises. The promises of Christ sustains our faith. 
Those promises help us. And as we lift our gaze from the challenges that we face to, my, to God's amazing love and his endless grace, we know that by our faith, God has already equipped us to run this race with unshakable confidence. Christ doesn't only pin your faith story, but he is also the perfecter of your faith. He says it is so, and so it is. Christ is the finisher of your faith. And that means that he perfects your faith. In other words, he has already run this race of faith with a triumphant finish. He blazed the path of salvation through faith in his father above, showing us that faith in God through Jesus Christ means ultimate victory over any circumstance and situation that the adversary tries to throw our way. Because it is Christ who brings perfection to our faith, we know that we can run this race with our eyes fixed on him. He is the beginning and he is the end of his promises. Jesus is what he said to be. Jesus will do what he says he will do. Therefore, trust him and know he will be with you. And what he says he is, he is. And what he says he will do, he will do. Everything that he promised you is yours. Possess it through faith. Christ will finish what he started. And his word lets us know that we can be confident in this thing. He who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion, even until the day of Christ Jesus. Christ will never give up on you. So don't you dare give up on him. He perfects our faith by leading us through experiences which sanctify us and help us to become more like him on this faith journey. First Peter tells us of the trial of our faith is being much more than that of precious gold. Though it is tried with fire, we may be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Christ Jesus. In other words, you're gonna go some, through some things. You're going to go through some trials. You're going to go through some tribulations. But at each turn, Christ is there to help you overcome. And he takes you from glory to glory to glory. He perfects your faith. He matures you as the sons and the daughters of the Most High God. He takes those challenges. He takes those trials. He takes those situations that come your way. And he looks at them as an opportunity to reveal his power in your life and to identify with your struggle. The divine spirit of the, of the Trinity, the son of God who came from heaven and put on earthly flesh, he did it to show us how to endure and how to overcome what the adversary tries to put before us. Christ endured trials. He endured temptations. He endured lies, pain, and reje rejection. He even endured persecution. He knows and he sees what you're going through. He has his hand on you. Know that the trials that you're going through, they have come to make you stronger, to make you wiser, to make you better in running this race with confidence and victory. My mama put it this way, if I never had problems, I would know my God could solve them. Saints of God, missionaries of mass, yes, there will be struggles on this Christian journey. You will experience strife. Life may sometimes cut you off at the knees. You will have bad days. You will have hills to climb. Trouble will come your way, but keep the faith. Stand on the promises of Christ and the word of God. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, 
nor any other creature shall be able to separate me from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. In the face of evil that's going on in this world, in our communities, in our families, in our homes, people need to see God is calling his faithful and steadfast servants to be a light in this world. More than ever, this world needs to understand who God is. They need to understand God's love. They need to know God's grace and his favor. And as Christ perfects your faith, as he gives you the victory over life situations, don't keep it to yourself. Share the good news of Jesus Christ. Tell them about the goodness of the Lord. Tell them about the love God had for you, even in the midst of your mess. Tell them about the God who forgave you, the God who rains mercy on the just and the unjust. Tell them about Christ and that he is, and he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Tell them how God healed your body and told you to run on in this race. Tell them that Christ never forsaken you, even in your darkest times. Tell them about how he laid down his life for you so you wouldn't be lost in a world of sin. Tell them about a God who has been a company keeper by day and night. Tell them of the Lord's goodness and that if it hadn't been for God on your side, you probably would have lost your mind. Let them know that you were once lost, sinking deep in sin, but it was God's love that lifted you. Tell them about the Jesus who is the author and finisher of your faith. People of God, my beloved, we know that we have a God who loves us. We have a God who sees us. We have a God who hears us. We have a God who has already completed the victory story for us. Now it is up to us to run this race, to run this race with patience, to run this race with endurance, to run this race with faith, knowing that Jesus Christ is the perfecter of our faith. He won't give us anything more than what we can handle, for we know that all things work together for good for those who love the Lord and who are called according to his purpose. Jesus, the Christ, the author and the finisher of our faith. Peace and blessings unto you this day. I praise and thank God that we know that he is perfecting our faith. Every day we wake up, we see new mercies and new glories. I thank God for all that he's doing as he continues to perfect the faith of his people. Praise God, blessings and peace unto you my father's children. And thank you for this opportunity to bring a message this morning. God bless you. We have just heard a wonderful, a great, a powerful message from our guest speaker of the hour, the Reverend Dr. Alondra Washington. She has shared with us a message on perfecting our faith. And I truly believe that if we were to follow what she has provided for us in this message, I believe we can all uh, move to another level of our faith. The Lord didn't, he didn't save us for us to stay in the same place, but in this Christian walk, it's designed for we grow and we move from a le one level to another level. And it's the same with our faith. Our faith has to continue to get stronger and more powerful and, and it allows us to move to another level. Uh, so with that, I just really enjoyed this message today, hearing how we are to perfect our faith. We're not saying that we're perfect, but we're saying that we follow the one who is. And as he continues to perfect us, we become the children of God that he has called us to be. We are all children under his leadership. And so we, with that, we thank you. 
We thank again the Reverend Dr. Alondra Washington. We thank our elder who approved her to, for, to give this message on today, uh, the Reverend Dr. Philip Washington, and we um, thank the Dozier Memorial CME family in Flint for allowing us to uh, have their First Lady with us today. And we also thank those, um, all of those who have gotten on that are friends, family members, those from both the Detroit and the um, mid-Michigan districts. We thank you. We ask that God continue to be with each and every one of you as you perfect your faith. Thank you. Amen. Let us praise God for that dynamic message from the, uh, the Reverend Dr. Alandra Washington as she spoke from our theme, Perfecting Our Faith. We are so very honored to serve under the visionary leadership of presiding elder, the Reverend Dr. Philip D. Washington, and our wonderful First Lady who spoke a very powerful message, the Reverend Dr. Alandra Washington. At this time now, let us extend the invitation to Christian discipleship. There may be someone here this morning who does not know Christ as their Lord and Savior. At this time, the door of the church is open. We welcome you, we invite you. If you don't know Christ as your Lord and Savior, let me invite you. This may be the last time. You say, well, why should I come? According to Romans 3.23, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Sin has consequences. According to Romans 6.23, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ gave his life that you might have eternal life. And according to Romans 5, 8, that God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Now, since Christ took your place, all you have to do now is receive him. According to Romans 10, 9 and 10, if we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in our heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, the scripture says that you will be saved. And then verse 13 of that same chapter says, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is your opportunity. Won't you come? Won't you come? Well, let me pray this prayer with you. It's called the prayer of salvation. Let me pray. Won't you? Let's bow our heads. Father, I have sinned. Forgive me. I thank you that Jesus has died on the cross and saved me from my sin. I receive you now as my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. If you've prayed that prayer and you meant it with all your heart, let me welcome you to the family of God. You are born again, you are saved. Let's praise God for your salvation. If you are here and you, don't, and you are saved, you were saved, but you got out of fellowship with him. Let me pray with you right now to restore your relationship with Christ. Heavenly Father, right now, your child who has gotten out of fellowship with you, strengthen their faith right now so that they might walk with you and that you might restore a warm relationship with them. Forgive them now. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Also, you're born again. You're saved, but you don't have a church home. Let me invite you to Mass Memorial Christian Methodist Episcopal Church. Our address is 5601 South Waverly Road in Lansing, Michigan. We would be delighted to have you as a member, and I would be honored to serve as your pastor. We will love you and nurture you in your walk with Christ. Amen. Let's give God some praise. Let's give God some glory for that dynamic message from Dr. Alandra Washington. Amen. At this time, let us now prepare for the doxology and our benediction. The 
benediction. Now the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and may the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit to rest, to rule, to abide with you, henceforth now and forever. And the church of God said with one voice, Amen. Amen. Continue to walk by faith and not by sight. God bless you all. Let's be in service.